Oh my God, is this film blasphemous? Is it mocking God and or Jesus Christ? Are all the people involved behind the scenes and in front of the camera going to burn in hell because of this production? We're going to talk about it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Just My Opinion for my The Book of Clarence movie review. And if this is your first time finding me and you happen to like this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. All right, man, we are now with the second film of 2024 that I've seen titled The Book of Clarence. The film is PG-13 coming in at two hours and 16 minutes. And I really cannot wait to talk about this one right here. Now, this is being directed by Mr. Jamez Jamet. No, I'm just playing James Samuel. I got your name correct this time, sir. My bad about last time. Guys, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go check out my review for The Heart of the Fall, which James Samuel did direct, which debuted on Netflix a number of years ago. It was really embarrassing, but I'm laughing about it now. But this is the gentleman, Mr. James Sammy, right here, who is responsible for the Book of Clarence. He is the writer, producer, and director. And just like I said, he is also the director for The Harder They Fall. And I also work with Jay-Z as a music director as well. Now, when it comes to my expectations for this film, they were right smack dab in the middle. I won't say that I was not looking forward to this film, which I was, but I wasn't excited about it either. I just did not know what to think. Before I even saw the trailer, I saw so much commentary online of people throwing this film down the drain, saying that it's ridiculous, it's garbage, it is blasphemous, it is mocking God and making fun of him, and you just need to stay the hell away from this movie for all of those reasons. And so then when I saw the trailer, I had that in my mind, and I was like, wait a minute, is this mocking God? I am not entirely sure. Even within the first five minutes of me watching this movie, I was kind of looking at it like this, like what is this movie really about? What are they about to say? And I really couldn't put my finger on it. So I really did not know what to expect, but at the very least I was intrigued because it had a great cast. I do like James Samuel and it looked like somewhat of the story of Jesus Christ with a bunch of black people. And you know, I like to see my people show up in films. So at the very least, I was going to check it out, but have an open mind. You can never judge a book by its cover. I have been surprised so many times before in the past, and I have learned that lesson. So those were my expectations, guys. But before I get into all the nitty gritty, before I talk about all my likes and dislikes, let me tell you exactly what this film, The Book of Clarence, is all about. Struggling to find a better life, Clarence is captivated by the power of the rising Messiah and soon risks everything to carve out a path to divine existence. And before we get started, guys, I just want to say this. If you don't like a movie that's perfectly fine, all things are subjective. However, if you have not seen this movie, if you have not seen this film, and especially don't plan on seeing it, don't put anything negative in the comments. I'm just not going to allow it. A lot of people did that with my The Color Purple review, and it was very annoying. If you see the film and you don't like it, feel free, okay? You can put whatever you want in the comment section. But if you haven't seen it, I don't want to hear anything negative. I will be removing all of those comments. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is the elephant in the room. Is this film disrespectful to Christ, to Jesus, to God? Is this film blasphemous? I can say this with all the confidence in the world, absolutely not. This film is not blasphemous at all. It is not disrespectful to God. It is not disrespectful to Jesus Christ in the slightest. At the very least, it is uplifting Jesus. It is uplifting God and gives you an interesting perspective that you've never seen before. And that is what makes it so great. And to be more specific, when I say that this film is not blasphemous or it does not mock God and or Jesus Christ, 
that's the film itself. But there may be a character or two that does mock God in this film. However, if that does make you pump your brakes, I love the creative way and vision that the director had in this film to address that accordingly. And I really did enjoy the journey that this character went on from the very beginning to the end of this film. It is very enlightening. And will pop off a lot of conversations when people are walking out this film, giving their opinions and how they felt about it. In a nutshell, this film is not necessarily about Jesus Christ per se, but if it is about Jesus Christ, it's about Jesus Christ through the eyes, through the lens of Clarence, played by Lakeith Stanfield. Now, Lakeith Stanfield has been in the game for quite some time now. He does have a number of credits under his belt. I do remember seeing him a while ago. He was in Atlanta, one of my favorite shows that's not here anymore, but he really had a standout role for me in Get Out that came out, I believe, in 2017. But like I said, the man has over 47 credits. You can check it out right here, his filmography on IMDb. I wanna talk him first because this actually may be my favorite performance of Lakeith Stanfield of all time. Again, he hasn't been doing this for 40 years. He has been doing it long enough and does have a lot under his belt, but I really did enjoy absolutely everything that this brother was dishing out on screen and it was incredible. I loved it. He was fantastic in this movie. Everybody was in front of the camera and behind, but man, he really did have a standout role in this and I just got to give him a round of applause right here. I loved everything about his role. But what I like about his character, Clarence, is even though I do not agree with the hill that he is dying on for the duration of this movie, or at least the beginning, I can understand where he is coming from. It's just not me. We're all cut from different cloths and our products of our environment. And when I see where he is coming from in this film, like I said, I can see his stance on things. And it's just a great reflection on life because I have been where he was at certain points in my life than he was in this movie. And I've also ran into people that are like Clarence in my personal life, friends and family as well too. I love his foundation. He's very unapologetic. He is confident and has a high level of self-esteem, but still realizes that he hasn't reached his full potential and is eating up at him and stopping him from breaking through that ceiling. And I can always respect a man or any human being that is satisfied where they are in life, but at the same time, they know that that's not enough and they still are striving to go even farther. And that is where Clarence is in this film. His journey in this film is a true adventure. I loved everything about it. There are times where the acting is just so superb and it's like some of the best you've ever seen. And it gets really passionate and dramatic. But then there's other moments where they flip it on you and it's very lighthearted and comedic to where you're going to be busting out laughing, rolling around in your seat. And that's just not with this character. It's with the whole movie and everyone involved. Not only did Lakeith Stanfield do a great job in this film as Clarence, but all of the supporting cast did too. Not anyone had a weak role in this film. Everybody had a standout. Omar Sy was fire in this movie. He was actually super duper fire. One of my other favorites in this movie R.J. Seiler, James McAvoy, and even Tayona Taylor. And I didn't even really know that she could act like that. If I'm not too familiar with her past work, that's on me. But even I was really impressed. Like, okay, damn, girl, you're really coming with it right here. You're really selling yourself as Mary Magdalene, and I'm loving every moment of it. David Oyelowo was great in this film, too. He's always great in everything that he does in this film. But I love the way how he was serious in this film and also could flip it on you and start making you laugh just like that. I saw bits from his character that I've never seen before, and it was a breath of fresh air, even though I was not suffocating at all watching this movie. But guys, seriously, this is not hyperbole. This is no exaggeration. Everybody had a fire performance in this film. Real talk, whether they was being serious or funny, I've said that like three or four times now, everybody was well-rounded in this film and that just made it that much more entertaining. But going back to Clarence, even though you may not agree with some of his antics in this movie, the man said it with his chest, okay? He will put his foot down. I love the relationship that he had with his mother. It reminded me of my relationship that I have with my mother. And that just makes your respect level for him go even further. But then the way that his brother would check him some Sometimes in this film, you would think that he's a douche bit, but no, he still is going to stand there 10 toes down and reply with something very thoughtful and innovating. It kind of forces you to look at everything from all sides and all angles like you should always do. 
And just another testament of how you cannot really judge a book by its cover. You cannot judge people. You do not know them. And you may think you know Clarence, but you don't. And you get to know more and more of him as this film progresses on, as you should. And you love each layer that is being pulled back throughout this movie. I also want to talk about the visuals, of course. This is a spectacle to look at. Please, if you have a chance, see it in theaters. And the way that everything pops out at you and how it's complimented by all the sound design and mixing it really is a theatrical experience. Some may even call it a cinematic masterpiece. I really do love that. And also just the creative decisions that James Samuel would use when he was directing this film to focus in on certain points of this film to make it stand out even more, whether it was just something crazy in the background or something in the foreground of how he would zoom in but black out the remainder of the screen. I don't think I've ever seen that before either, but he really did put his signature style all over this and it's going to stand the test of time now sometimes in this film the set designs the production feels like the biggest production ever in hollywood but there's also times where it's scaled down and it feels like a stage play with an unlimited budget with all the fine fixings and glitter surrounding it i mean the way that switches back and forth I absolutely love that as well. And there are a number of points in this film that pull from the Bible stories that we're familiar with and also images. I'm thinking right now about The Last Supper. And when it's developing on screen, you can do nothing but smile just saying, oh my gosh, I know what you're doing right there. It hasn't fully developed yet, but here it's coming and you just can't wait. I mean, you're really, really excited saying, I think this is what this man is doing right here. Is he about to do it? Oh, he did it. It's just a perfect Kodak moment. It's nothing short of remarkable. And it left me smiling from ear to ear. And I couldn't wait to see more. And I even did. And going back to the sets, the production of this film, the makeup, the costumes, the wardrobe, all of that is very, very lovely. I love the cast. I talked about that before, but specifically about the cast is, I mean, you have black people in this film throughout the whole diaspora. And I love that all different shades of blackness. I talked about that a little bit in my The Color Purple review, which is a film that I really did enjoy, the reboot, remake, reimagining the musical. But it's even a bigger standout in this film as well. I mean, we are described in the Bible speaking about black people all throughout, but we've never had this type of visual representation of us. It's beautiful. It may make a tear fall down. I mean, this is just the perfect interpretation of this story with people that look like us. And I mean, this is just something that we deserve and that we should have gotten a long time ago. And so when you throw that in with everything else, like the set design, wardrobe, costumes, makeup, all that that I just talked about, man, it, it makes you feel good. I mean, you are proud. You feel like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I see myself in this film right here, Biblical Times. I was checking out a interview with James Samuel and Lakeith Stanfield promoting this film, and they used the term biblical chocolate. I think that is a, one of the perfect ways to describe this movie is biblical chocolate. I mean, there, there's no way, but there's no better way that you can describe it. And I believe I said before, this is also just a great reflection on life. And I believe in the Bible, in the book of Ecclesiastes, I can't remember if it's chapter three or chapter four, but it talks about how nothing is new under the sun. And man, that really is on the forefront when you're watching this film. Like, oh my gosh, a couple of thousand years ago, the stuff that they did back then, they are still doing today. And it's a darn shame. And the way that James addressed that as well was great. Now, there is always infighting in every group, whether you're red, white, yellow, black, or brown. And there is some infighting between black people in this film. But the black people in this movie are on code because when the white supremacists, aka the Romans, step up, the way they put all of those differences aside and be like, okay, I do have my quarrels with this person over here, but I'm not just going to let you come bombarding in with this whole I'm white and I say so ruling and just do whatever the hell you want to do. I'm going to put my feet down. I'm going to say it with my chest. And man, that was possibly one of my favorite scenes of this movie when they're talking about all of the inadequacies uh, white supremacy and people that believe in that garbage right there. It really does. I wanted to stand up and cheer, to be honest with you. And again, these are serious scenes in this film. But guys, this is also a comedy. You're going to laugh your butt off in this film. There was one joke that dropped kind of towards the beginning. Everybody bust out laughing 
doing this one scene. And I mean everybody, the white people, the black people, everybody. And then talking about race, who is this movie for? I mean, it's for everybody, whether you're red, white, yellow, black, or brown. But man, especially if you're black, if you are a black person and you miss out on this movie, whether you are a believer or a non-believer, you are missing out on the street. I mean, I'm serious. I can say right now that it, we're only in January, okay, that this most likely will be in my top 10 best films of 2024. I didn't do a best of 2023 because I felt like I missed a number of films, but I'm going to really try to do that for 2024. And if this, the book of Clarence is not on, on it, I'm not going to put it in my list, but I have a lot of confidence that it's going to be on that list by the end of this year. And the way that he moves the camera is dope as hell. This guy right here has his own unique style and it really does stand out. Now, there are a couple of scenes that start off kind of weird, but if you just kind of let it sit there and soak, let it simmer a little bit and heat up, you're like, okay, I don't know where you was going with this at first, but okay, I like what I'm seeing right now. I like this. This is quite nice. Keep it up. Let's let's keep that going. Let's not lose that energy. Did I mention that there is action too? Yes, it is. Now, this is not no 300 or anything like that, but there is bits of action in this film, and I really do like it. I also saw an interview where James said that one of his favorite films is Ben Hur, and I could be wrong. It got some representation of that in this film, too. So you got just bits of everything. If you want to, there, there, there's no tone for this movie. I mean, it's everywhere, but that's a good thing. That's a positive. I mean, if you, if you no one can complain saying that Hollywood don't come out with original movies anymore because you got one right here. They really do be coming out with original stuff, but nobody goes to go see it and be making only $10 million at the box office worldwide. But man, this right here is an original film, even though it's somewhat the story of Jesus Christ through somebody else's lens. You know, I mean, just imagine the story of Jesus Christ a couple of thousand years ago and just somebody that was in the streets and they would saw Jesus around. I mean, it's from their perspective, but it's great. It's good. And guys, we got to talk about the music. We got to talk about the score. That's possibly the best thing in this film. You are going to be grooving in your seats, bobbing your head and stomping your beat. The score, the soundtrack for this was fire. And it mean it makes sense. Jay-Z is a producer in this film. He has worked with James Samuel before. You also have James Lasseter, who is a music producer, I believe. He also worked on a lot of the films with Will Smith. But all of those people are involved in this movie. This film is not a musical, but there are parts that feel like a music video. And that makes sense because of James Samuel's resume. And the movie does not just have the music and the score in the background. The characters use all the beats and melodies to influence their movements, whether they're dancing, singing, or fighting in an action scene. All of those combined into one, it's just a superb experience that I don't want you to miss out on. There are three chapters in this book, and it's not jarring. I mean, all of American films come in a three-act structure, but they really do make sure you are aware of that when you're watching this film. And I like the way they split it up, too, I mean, because it's a different movie in each book, but it all comes together in the end beautifully. But really what's great in this film is I don't want to say that there's a message, and I don't want to say it's preachy, but this film does have a creative way of telling the story of Jesus Christ from a believer standpoint of view and a non-believer. Whether if you are agnostic, whether if you are an atheist, whether if you are a holy roller, whether you go to church or don't or haven't read your Bible in 16 years, it gives a great perspective from all of those angles. And anyone can take something out of this movie and I really do think that you should see it. I loved it. This film was fantastic. I cannot wait to see it again, whether it's by myself, a group of friends, or whatever. There is so much to love in this film. Now, those are the things that I really did enjoy about this film. Now, let me just kind of transition to some things that did not just completely knock it out of the park. When it comes to the ending... Usually I would say something like, okay, they could have chopped 5, 10, or 15 minutes off. I kind of wish it would have been extended on maybe another 60 seconds or a minute or two. There was At one point, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be angry if the film ends right here. And it didn't. It kept going, but it could have. they could have stretched it out just a little bit more. Also, towards the beginning of the film, I was a little bit confused with the timeline of events. It was something that didn't make sense to me, and it was distracting. 
I was kind of saying to myself, wait a minute, how can this character have said this line of dialogue right here when this person over here is still alive? They're not dead. I don't want to go any further and like spoil it for you, but that it, that kind of distracted me for a good 20 minutes and that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, but that's not a big deal. I also really don't understand Benedict Cumberbatch's role in this film. I, I just, I got to see it again. I saw this at an Alamo Draft House. Not, not to crap on Alamo Draft House. I mean, y'all do your thing over there, but I do not like going to movie theaters where the waiter, waitresses comes in and, hey, take your order and giving people, re it, it's distracting me. And that happened a lot when I was watching some movie and I'm just, uh, I get easily distracted. And so that's probably what it was. I mean, there was also just another point where it was a group of people and I kind of felt like they could have left this situation a long time ago. But those are really nitpicks, okay? Those are nitpicks. It's not that big a deal. I would just kind of send to myself, wait a minute. You know, yeah, they didn't really add up all the way. 97, 98 out of 100 with those few aspects right there. But overall, they're just small nitpicks. I love the film overall. And if you get a chance, please see this movie because I don't want you to miss out. And I will go ahead and give my rating at the end. But for now, that is just my opinion. And I want to thank you so much for tuning in. If you did like this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment what you thought about the film or if you plan on seeing it. And what was your interpretation of the trailer the first time you saw it? If I had to rate this film out of a one out of ten... Ooh, man, 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 man. I'm going to give it a nine out of 10. I'm, and when I see it again, I, I don't know, I may bump it up to a 9.5, but I'm going to give it a solid nine out of 10. This film was superb and I can't wait to see it again. But guys, again, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery and that's just my opinion. Peace.